One of these images was shot with a $30 filter, and the other was shot with a $90 filter. Can you tell the difference? Today, we're going to be talking about UV filters and how and if they affect image quality. Let's get into it. So this is a question that comes up in photography discussion and forums and at stores uh, and between photographers it shoots all the time whether or not to use a UV filter. The job of a UV filter, of course, is to break first. It's a thing that you put in front of a lens and the whole goal is that if you do happen to hit your lens against something, hopefully you'll break uh, an inexpensive piece of glass rather than the actual front element of your lens. Now the argument against them has always been if you're putting a piece of glass in front of your lens, you're adding another optic onto the lens, and since there's very low likelihood that that filter will be of the same optical quality as the glass inside of your lens, you'll be lowering your optical quality. So we're gonna test that today. We're going to do some real world tests, uh, meaning actually taking uh, a lens on a camera body out and just doing, we're really gonna look at about two pictures here, and I'm gonna shoot with no filter, a $30 filter, a $60 filter, and a $90 filter. Different glass qualities, all of them UV. We're gonna shoot in manual exposure on a tripod so that the exposure from the camera is identical. And we're gonna see what demonstrable difference they create. And so without any further ado, let's take a look at the images that we recorded. We're gonna take a look at three things. Detail, color shift, and if there's chromatic aberration added into the image. And these are gonna be real world tests, shooting pictures and actually looking at results we can actually see and discern with the human eye. Uh, that, that's really what's going to matter in the image quality that we produce and in the art that we create. So we're gonna test these. Um, I was shooting with a Canon EOS R with a native 24 to 70 RF uh, 2.8 L series lens. And so this was with a high end lens from Canon, and I was testing with three basic UV filters, no polarizers, no uh, no other specialty parts, just UV, a 30, 60, and $90 filter for each one. So let's get into it, and we're gonna start with detail. Uh, we're gonna start with here, this is no filter, $30 filter, $60 filter, $90 filter. Now we may have seen something kind of interesting happen that uh, we didn't even expect from our initial questions, and that was overall brightness. Take a look here. This is the no filter version of the image, and now let's compare it to a $30 filter. And as we can see, putting the filter on loses just a little bit of light. These were all shot manual exposure with the exact same exposure. So any darkening that happens is because of the filter, not the camera. And so if we look in this area of grass here, it is darker than the same area without a filter. And it's not particularly the result of being the $30 filter. If I take a look, instead of that one, if I take a look at all three of the images that were shot with filters, 30, 60, 90, if I look at them, they're all darker than the one without. So here's no filter, and then on the right is going to be the $90 filter. And we see that it has darkened by the same basic amount, about a tenth of a stop, a very, very small amount. As we're gonna see in a little bit, that's actually going to affect how dark the image is and the color saturation. But first I wanna take a look at detail. So let's go in here. Image with no filter on the left, same image with a $90 UV filter on the right. Just taking a look at detail. Edge of the sign, text in the lettering, detail there in the bolt. And there's really no discernible loss in image uh, sharpness, no loss in detail. But is that because it's a $90 filter? Let's find out. We're actually gonna take away those. Here's a $30 filter. And let's take a look even a little bit more close up. And now let's take a look here. $30 filter on the left, $90 filter on the right. Take a look here at the bolt, at the edge of the lettering, edge of the sign. 
And you might say there is the most minute difference in the edge of the lettering up the top of the O and at the edge of the sign there. But it is so small that it is nearly irrelevant. I had to look at these images about five times before I really saw that difference in them. So the actual detail difference, what we really worry about with UV filters, is actually something that doesn't really show up. There's not a difference in detail. Let's take a look at another series. So here is the $30 filter. All right. Let's do there. That's about 100%. Uh, maybe that far in. Yeah, that's about 100%. $30 filter on the left, $90 filter on the right. And if we take a look here, up here, maybe the smallest amount of difference in this area, but it is not significant. If I look at it here, at this view, same level of detail and nearly the same level of contrast inside of the image. I would argue that the $90 filter has added a little bit of darkening and contrast in here. We're going to take a look at that when we take a look at color. So realistically, I'm going to say that the filter itself is not making any sort of a demonstrable difference in detail on the lens which is really shocking. I was not expecting that result. Now let's look at color. I wanna take a look down here. Green, red, some browns, and grays. So, oops, let's go in. All right, no filter, $30, $60, dollar. Take a look at how deep the greens are. I'm gonna go back. No filter, $30, $60, it just got a little bit darker, $90, it just got a little bit darker. The darker one shifted, the $90 filter shifted the image a little bit darker, which increased the color saturation just a little bit. You can see it in the greens as we go through. In fact, let's take a look at this, $30 on the left, $90 on the right. So the $90 filter actually added a little bit of color saturation because it darkened the image ever so slightly. And so without the filter at all, we are actually going to see a lower amount of color saturation here on the left than with a UV filter on the right. It's not dramatic. It was not even a fact that I noticed when I was shooting the images, but it did happen. So now let's take a look at chromatic aberration. And for that, we're gonna take a look at the side of the sign. And I wanna take a look here. So, no filter. We're actually getting the smallest amount there. And we're still recording it with a $30 filter there. So I would say it's not adding anything. If I take away the $30 filter and I add in a $60 filter, it's actually starting to remove some of that. Some of that small amount of chromatic aberration is actually being diminished by the UV filter. If I replace the $60 filter with the $90 filter and take a look, it actually has come back a little bit relative to the $60 filter. In fact, let's take a look at that. If I take those two away, here's the 60 on the left, the $90 on the right. If I take a look, the chromatic aberration is actually marginally less on the 60 millimeter filter. So we've had some really shocking results, things that after um, a decade and a half in the photographic industry, I was not expecting that the UV filter is not affecting detail. It is affecting exposure by a little bit. And as a result, it's, it's affecting color saturation. And in order to get the best results with perhaps, perhaps uh, chromatic aberration, 
the most expensive filter is not necessarily the best. Very interesting results. So this was a result that I really did not expect at all. I expected going in for there to be a difference between uh, the $30 filter and the $60 filter, but not nearly as much between the $60 filter and the $90 filter. And for the $90 and no filter to be pretty much identical. What I really did not see coming was that there was almost no demonstrable change in detail that we recorded between all four options. That was a truly striking thing. I also did not expect for these to actually change the exposure, and they did. Interestingly, the filters of all different flavors gave us about the same amount of actual exposure change, though it seems like the, uh, the $90 filter gave us the most exposure change. We lost a little bit of light, and that seems to have changed then the way that color saturation uh, is being perceived because we lost about a tenth of a stop of light. That was not something I expected. So this test was really something uh, that was really good to do because we did have some null results. We did have uh, some actual results, but none of them were what I expected. So uh, does this change the way that you view taking a filter and putting it onto your lens? Uh, is this going to affect the way that you uh, decide to put filters onto your lenses? Um, have they ever kind of saved your bacon uh, with a particular lens? I'd love to hear about it. Uh, so if this was useful, of course, like everybody on YouTube, we ask you to like and subscribe, and I hope that you have a wonderful wonderful day and thanks for watching. Bye.